performing to your full potential? Like, how do you get them ready for the next map? I know, just tell them, you know, like, Subbis is just their best map, you know, just forget about it. Ankara, you know, we prepared for this one. We have good executes. Let's just play our stuff and let's see how it works, you know? Mm. Like, just forget about the last map. We are famous, popping off anyway. We have Kai's. So we have nothing to lose, you know? In the end, Imperial is the favorite here. And I think they also know that probably the match against LCK will be the decisive one in this group if they make it at least to the wildcard stage. Mm -hmm. But of course, winning today would be a big bonus for them. And no one expected it, right? So, yeah. Just don't feel the pressure. Just play your game, play to your strong suits. Definitely a good call, I would say, as we're getting ready to hop on to Ankara for the third map as the champs are coming out from both sides. Just trying to hype themselves up to get into this third and final map. This is uh, the fun of best of threes. We make it one and one, and we get a decider map to decide who is going to move on with a win in the group. So, moving on into this one, Kangarna going to start off on the blacklist side. And let's see what kind of aggressive maneuvers they can go for. Will they go as aggressive as they did on sub base? I do wonder. It looks like Imperial might be setting for something outside of A here. I mean, you've got four players dedicated on this side of the map, even almost debatably five, depends on where LKK decides to go. Uh, no doubt about it, Kandana are going to have a fight on their hands if they want to go A. Lots of exchanges so far, but the first couple of kills will go the way of Lukum, and Imperial will be happy to see that. He got that flank going really quick. Yeah, definitely a nice little wrap around there. Um, just uh, a lot of distraction from the rest of the team uh, on top of this quarters area outside of A. And was traded back. We did get that one kill going over to Brando, who was great on Mexico and then just a bit quiet on the second map. So hopefully, you know, the team kind of pump him up and uh, try to say like, hey, man, you're, you're great at this. You, you, you got this in the bag. Let's, let's go. Let's try to pump him up. Um, now they do have, they've just slowly pushed through. They haven't moved at all outside of this one area. So it looks like they are going to push through the air duct here and try to aggress onto A. Well, they've been spotted out now. Goken watching for Michael. He's going to get that kill. It's only Mercs to find the entry onto the site. And Imperial with a solid first round. Both teams kind of having the same idea to contest outside of A, but Imperial do it a little bit better. Yeah, that's what I meant. You know, Imperial, they really like to play aggressive here on this GR side, having a double arm set up. This time, not even fit for sniping. It's, it's Rio Zhao. So they have many gifted sniper rifles on the squad which helps a lot if you play Ankara, also Compound, and these kind of maps you can play two sniper rifles, sometimes even three sniper rifles. Here comes Kangarna up towards the office. Looks like Lukam is going to be over here. Maybe they say, okay, well, Goken's probably playing A. Let's just charge the other side of the map. But Lukam says, no, I'm over here. He is going to be taken out, though, as Mercs does get that entry. Kill Fefe, nice timing just to wrap around here. Michael will trade it back. Three on three, and we got some action in mid as well. The Central Passage might be seeing Brando and Ruzal butting heads here. It's not an angle that's super easy to clear that pit. If you do clear it, you're sort of exposing yourself to everywhere else in mid while you're trying to do so. So it might almost even be better if Brando just doesn't push his way forward here from Kangana and they default their way back over to A. But he is going to go forward. As long as he doesn't expose himself to pit, though, this is not too bad, but he has well. now been spotted. I was thinking <laughs> maybe he's going to go into the tunnel, but instead just progresses through mid, and oh, ADRF with a Sharpie as well. Wallbang headshot onto Kai's, and Michael can't get it done. Starting to fire up again on the Imperial side. There's some impressive shots here from ADRF getting the wallbang, as well as look how of the drop shot onto Famous in this long B area. So the momentum is definitely on the side of Imperial. Yeah, I mean, they've come out to play here in the first couple of rounds. Uh, it's been kind of wonky ones where, you know, you get a lot of action from the GR side pushing out. And that last one where everybody was kind of spread out along the map. Now, Goken had a amazing end to round one. And he's going to get that snipe off early in round three. Imperial already in control of this, round, of this map and this round after that pickoff. Yeah, it's uh, been a tough start for Kangana. Every single round they started a player or two down. First round it was two, second round and third round it's been one player down. So you're basically playing 4v5 the entire map so far. Does make it difficult on the caller to 
say anything with confidence and they're going to push their way toward A again but there's three players already over on this side of the map they need the entries they'll get the mercs wow. that is a bit more like it but still you've got to get Ryu Zhao who's playing behind the box and he's just popping off he's been helped out by ADRF and even despite a nice moment from mercs Kungana cannot break open the site yeah good entries here from mercs on A side even though they lost to the Sean I still feel like they should avoid Gokun on this A side because Gokun loves to play from A connector, even sniping aggressive from alleyway or A main. And I feel like it's much easier against Imperial to push towards B side. I mean, Fifth and Gokun probably the best two players from Imperial, both playing playing on A. Yeah. So it might be easier to push towards B side. And you can see though that the second they don't put any pressure on A, Fefe is like coming back to spawn. <laughs> He's getting so much information that it just allows the rest of the team, okay. Uh, allows them to know that, okay, we just got to be ready for a push underneath. Uh, nothing in front yard just yet. And yep. ADRF is just waiting for this. Yeah, I like it. Imperial did push out through the smoke on A main and they get the info. They've got the early rotate across and they've got the numbers here on the B bomb site. They are reading Kangana like a book. And sure, you can get a couple of kills here on the entry, but at the end of the day, you've got a massive numbers advantage for Imperial. And it ends up being a two on one. C4 dropped. Brando with a tough ask ahead to try to prevent the 4-0 and zero lead for Imperial on map 3. Yeah, definitely a bit of a problem if everything gets stopped early on. You just lose so much uh, confidence in that situation. Brando may have just seen him in back delay. He's like, okay, actually, never mind. Um, I'm going to go the other way. Well, he's and got time. Yeah, he does have a lot of time. And he does not have the C4. So he's got to choose one way or the other. He's going to come face to face with Goken at some point. And there it is. Goken just going to hit the Damn. shot. As you would expect, 4-0 to zero going the way of Imperial, which, to be honest, I didn't quite expect after no. the first couple of maps. Yeah, I really thought that uh, Kungana was going to come out the gates hard and strong here on the Blacklist side. And I think that was kind of the intention with the first round play toward the A side. It's just that Imperial read into that. And it was a straight up massive push in through mid that undid them. One for one, Goken kills Brando, Kai's kills Goken. It's a good trade. Yeah, 4v4 should open the map up a little bit for Kangana to try to exploit some holes. Well, let's see where they do want to eventually push. You take out Goken, makes it a bit easier. The angle here though, very nice. And Lukam just gonna take down Famous who Unfortunately, has not really been given a chance to tap on any heads. He, ha he hasn't had any really good looks and hasn't gotten the drop on, on many players. Adrian pretty far up here and might be able to get the drop on this uh, counter push coming in from Kangarna. He is going to see them, but immediately nice tap from Mercs. Hits him in the head. Mm. And those entries have been cleaned from him. I've never really been a huge fan of that position that Eddie Arf is playing. It always ends up being, uh, it feels like a one and done it in, in, in a best case scenario. Now, I know you do get information off of that, but even still, it was enough to bring it back to three on three, but maybe that doesn't matter. The rest of the Imperial lads seem to have this one on lockdown. Two players already set up over on the B site. Lukum from behind is going to drop the C4 and Mercs as well. So Imperial. Five and zero, and it is about time for a timeout from Kangana. Yeah, although the Scotland is zero to five, I feel like Mercs is feeling it right now, getting multiple entry frags for his team. What I don't understand about Kangana right now is why did they have Brando in the clutch situations twice in a row, you know? Usually this is the role for Famous, maybe even Kai's. So Brando should be the second or the third guy when they're going for an execute. Mm. This would be my advice for them, because Famous is someone in a one-on-two clutch situation this is actually, this, these kind of rounds is actually like made for him, right? Mm. Yeah, it kind of feels like they're pushing without Brando and Brando's like just left alone. Like, oh, well, <laughs> I guess everybody died. I, I guess I have to kind of do something from here, but definitely not the setup that you want uh, to be playing towards from the side of Kangarna. So I think it's a good time to take a timeout, right? 5-0, better than uh, any later, I would say, because if you let this one run away from you, Imperial, very momentum-based. I mean, the second they started to win on, on sub-base, it's kind of been theirs since then, uh, outside of Famous and Kai's, who have been very resilient, I could say, uh, against the push and against the momentum. 
the freight train that is Imperial. And they immediately move on to Ankara, and all of a sudden it feels like they are just a much better team. Yeah, especially firepower-wise, you can tell that the Imperial is just much stronger than Kungana. I feel like the only chance Kungana basically has on this map is he should just push as a unit, and then again, having Kai's and Famous as the fourth and the fifth guy, uh, maybe getting the clutches. I still would say they should definitely avoid pushing a set because Gokin got like two or three entry frags in a row in this area. Yeah, it is rough though when it when it feels like okay, well. We just don't get to access that side of the map because there's one dude. <laughs> it's like, well, our options are very limited. But I do agree. Like, you still can do very nice pushes elsewhere. Um, they are going to push into A, though. Here is Mercs. He's not going to get the entry this time. Fefe ready for him in the air duct. So that's the team is coming in. But he's reading the pressure excellently. The grenade getting some value, breaking up the push. And Fefe is holding it alone, gets three kills. And now there's so much power taken away from this push. Hmm. Time and time again, Kangana are uh, just running out of brick wall, it seems. Riazar uh, will go down. Maybe one of the bricks is crumbling, but three on two still doesn't paint a pretty picture for Kangana. This execute looked kind of weird. I felt like they were baiting each other, you know, like they're pushing without any flash, any utility usage. Anyway, it's a two versus two situation, so this round seems to be doable. Yeah, especially with Kai's, he's alive, right? Like yeah. they, they went for the push and. One of Kaizen Famous is alive, so it's not exactly the best situation that you were calling for, but it works out. And Kai's going to pick up two clutch kills. This is what you wanted to see. And now let's see if ADRF can hold oh, it together. Dear. 1v2, he's going to get the one. They don't push together. And Kai's with a minute left. Seems like ADRF is going to just wait and see where the plant comes in and then make a decision on where to go, although he is certainly wary about this going down at A, and now he knows 100%. Going to go back. Well, ADRF, is he going to be expecting that peak from Kai's? Yes, he is. And another nail in the coffin for Kungana. Oh, he's even going to let him know what he thinks. A bit of a shake of the head there. You can <laughs> see yeah. he's still doing it. Yeah. Oh, man. I felt like the time was perfect for Kai's, but for some reason he can't connect the shot onto ADRF. Now Scotland is 6-0 to zero in favor of Imperial. Yeah. You can see he's uh, not... Very pleased with the way that that one turned out with himself. I mean, he was the one who kind of pulled it together uh, in this one. Even missing that shot, but still hitting the one-tap headshot with a Colt. I mean, that's what you need out of the guys that are alive at the end. And I think Kai's has kind of decided to become the anchor for the team. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough ask now for Kangana to come back from this mentally, but also just in terms of the rounds. Best case scenario, first half is going to be a 6-3 scoreline, and Imperial are not looking like they're making a mistake here. I think we can really just put Mexico down as a map that Imperial doesn't feel too comfortable on, but put them on a map where they feel confident, and it's a completely different looking team. Yeah, it's very true. I would imagine that all gamers are just going to be very happy with the fact that Imperial showed that they're not strong on Mexico and that Imperial are just going to ban Mexico from here on out, which means that uh, now, you know, you, you essentially get the perma ban uh, from Imperial uh, on that map. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm speaking for them. Maybe they just say, oh, that was a fluke. You know, I were been on this map and that's why we left it up. But we'll have to see how those uh, pick bans do play out in the future uh, in that group. Yeah, I agree. I feel like today was the last time we're going to see Imperial playing Mexico. I feel like the bigger <laughs> the map, the more comfortable they feel because the aim is just insane. Oh, yeah. Fei Fei in the cutout, not able to do too much, but the trades are certainly there for Imperial. They had the numbers on this site, and they still do. Goken, I would suspect, is going to be an unexpected force, but he was spotted out on that cross. LKK, ambitious with a rifle on that angle, but it'll come down to another two-on-one clutch for Imperial. This time it's LKK to have a crack. Kaiser and Michael to try to keep things alive for Kankana. Yeah, this is going to get pretty interesting because you could see Lukami's just going to wait and actually peeking in now. Maybe not 100% sure that they're still there, but he gets the answer, taps him a couple of times, and now it's Michael against Lukam, who is 9 and 4. Not again. <laughs> 
<laughs> Unfortunately, I think, again, mm. is uh, the answer here. He's going to call it, too. Look at that. I, yeah. I think he's recognized this is not going to be a toward A. He's, he's already on the way over toward B, which is a very intelligent choice because, yeah, Michael's going to get the planter, but I don't know that he's necessarily expecting such a fast rotation. Let's see where his initial peak goes. Oh, he didn't see him. He did not see him. Right angle at least, but oh. there it is. The one tap, Lukam is going to take him down, and that is huge. Once again, an Imperial member is able to go 1v2 in the clutch right at the end, taking two one-on-ones, and... You know, you could call it down to execution from Kangarna. It doesn't seem like they're playing their best game, but Imperial having those clutch plays to keep it scoreless, essentially, for Kangarna, that is. Obviously, lots of scores on the side of Imperial. Any semblance of mental strength now for Kangarna has got to be lost. You're in the third map. You're down 0 and 7. Like, how can you possibly come back from this? Famous finally having a, a rougher performance, and, like, look, you can't blame him, you know? He's had two insane maps, and it's not just a one-man show. Someone else has to step up here and do the work for Kangana, and I just don't get the sense that that is going to happen. Brando at least will get the kill onto Lukum, who's pushing into mid, but you can you can see where Feifei's found himself already. The push through on that uh, defensive side is just so fast. Well, they did spot him, as uh, it is Kais who's playing point back there, but Gokin will not be stopped. He is just going to line up two kills. And they don't even get to plant the bomb. It looks like Kangarna was in a good spot to maybe make a, uh, a try here at the B site. But it was not meant to be because it was Gokin and it was Ruzao who was nearby just in case. Didn't even need him, but he's here now. Question is also why they even pushing? There wasn't even the smoke in front of GR base. And, you know, pushing uh, when Gokin is sniping, that doesn't make too much sense, as you might saw. Well, Trade's coming back through again. The plan's not even down necessarily, so Imperial don't have to do anything too over-eager here. Kaiser's position has been found out by Gokin, but it's not going to help him out. There you go, Famous steps up this time. Yeah, finally, we see Famous here in the clutch situations, what I want to see before as well. But we saw like Brando and Michael Lee. Okay, I felt like if Famous would have been there as well, it could have been like a maybe like a 3-6 to six scoreline. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there there were definitely some opportunities for them that uh, unfortunately were lost in some of those close rounds. But, you know, if you're going to start, it's better to start now than to let it go 10-0, although they do push through smoke. Adrian there once again, and a snipe comes through from Kai's, able to just line it up. Famous is going to go down pretty early, though, as, you know, he's the first one pushing through afterwards. So he's not really <laughs> listening to the advice, Evan. He's kind of getting in there looking for the 1v1 plays and trying to go for the picks, but it's just not going his way. And the guys on Imperial have just been so consistent. As Fefe's out here in quarters looking for some picks himself. Oh, the nade almost finished him off. He'll get one more chance at it, but it won't work out too well. Still, it's enough of a distraction for Lukum to come for the swing. And Brando unable to do it on the final round of the half. Eight to one, that is the most dominant first half we've seen today. Yeah, especially Lukaum stepping up to the play with multiple clean headshots, such as clean headshot against Michael on this B side area, it was pretty insane. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to challenge that you could say uh, at this point in time. It really does feel like Imperial have become the team that we expected to see by the end of it all. It was a really good showing from Kangarna from the early stages, even onto sub base. But I think. Uh, the story and the script may finish off the way we expected it here by the end of it. Imperial just unstoppable when it does come, especially to a couple of their really strong maps, just putting two and two together. So now looking even stronger here on Ankara. Let's see if uh, Kangarna can pick up any more rounds after the half. Looking quite tentative to make any plays at the early stages of the round, Kangarna, but maybe now... Pushing in through the vent could work out. I think Gokin has maybe spotted the jiggle peek there from Merckx or... By the way, he's definitely keeping an eye on that angle. Nothing going to be coming from main. Doesn't really need to worry about that for the moment. But I do feel like Kungana is going to try to make a push here in the vent. The double setup. Famous and Merckx. Now that they've heard that shot as well, surely they're incentivized. Timing at this point, if Kungana were to go now, would actually favor them. Get a lot of information. They'll be able to rotate an extra player back over to B. I feel like they should go for an info play now, not waiting too long here in this alleyway. So they'll realize that A side is completely open, that no player from Imperial is waiting there. 
Yeah, they're just kind of sitting back on their hind heels and they might just get bulldozed here with just not enough members to defend this push. The flash is good. Kai's in position back with Michael trying to hold this one off. They've done a little bit of damage, but it is Goken to get the snipe through the window and it is full control of B given on over. Michael holds his own against the aggression and buying some time, but Goken still just holding point, staring through the window, getting multiple kills as Fefe's gonna get this plant down now. And position totally in favor of Imperial. It is only Michael left available, and he's sitting in smoke against four members of Imperial. Well, at the end of the day, I think all we can say is nice try, Kungana. Like, it was a nice <laughs> yeah. try. It they, was. They did really yeah. well on it was, map one. It was a nice try. Map two was pretty, uh, pretty competitive, but this is Imperial we're talking about, so NT. Go next. Yeah, no shame. I mean, you, you got a map, and uh, maybe that's better than some of the other teams of this group can say uh, at the end of this one. Now, Imperial not going to go down without a fight here, uh, or rather, Kangarna, as Imperial won't either. They are going to take the advantage in this round and stop the aggression that was coming from under B. As now 4v3, the A site, only Mercs is on top of that one. And the B side just being looked at by Kais, who is holding on to the arm. Let's see which angle Imperial do want to take on the aggression. Nothing yet, but definitely trending toward the B side with the position of the C4, though. I think they'll give a bit of time here to ADRF to maybe just explore over on the A side and see if there's anything happening there. In the meanwhile, though, that is going to incentivize Kangana to go for a bit of a push, which is, again, what you need to be doing when you're at a numbers disadvantage. And it will net them a kill, so that's good news. Though, if ADRF has been able to communicate quickly to his team there, he'll say there's two players on the other side of the map. Just go into B right now. Worst case scenario, it's a three on one. Yeah, and they are going to get that uh, extra kill there as well onto Fefe. And now, Plant is coming in here, but immediately Kangarna are in position to challenge this. Let's see how slowly they want to get in there as Ruzao is going to get the jump on a very nice swing onto Kai's, who has been pretty key on this map so far uh, out, out of the <laughs> few moments here for Kangarna. Michael pushing up against the wall, trying to get up on top of the boxes. It's going to work as he distracts alongside of Mercs, and they do clear it out, and they will pick up a second round win. The dream's alive, boys! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good retake from Kangana. I feel like the, the play from Kais was key here, working up towards A connector, spotting ADF, and the instantly knew, okay, this, this should have been an A fake. Then they went for the fast rotation towards GR base. So well played by Kais here. But it might be too late. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> a wise philosopher once said it might be too late. <laughs> and I think I think that that just seals the deal, doesn't it? Really, I should never get away with two. But he has. Yeah. It was a nice swing too. I, I, I like, you know, you're not in a great spot. You're trying to double swing a corner. Uh, the timing wasn't the greatest, but the idea I think was okay. As famous trying to tap on some heads here. He is going to pick up one. And Kai's gets a kill himself as well. Kangarna, resilient. They will no, not go out just yet. Oh, Ryuzao does drop. So again, there's another good chance here, but Mercs walks right into the crosshair from Goken. He doesn't even need to move at all. C4's in a forward position, actually. If Goken gets one more, this is probably round over. And look at that flick. He's just so sharp with the Colt. Almost, I almost feel like he's better with the Colt than he is with the Orm, as crazy as it is to say, but I just see so many kills of his coming from that pistol. Yeah. It's weird because some of the best snipers are... <laughs> you say that about some of the best snipers, right? Which yeah. is, we say that because they're so good at using the Orm, but it ends up those are the best guys at the pistol usage as well most of the time. Kai's here. Speaking of which, Orm user trying to stop a push... Uh, he was in a pretty good spot, but now he's trying to wrap around, actually, which, if he goes fast enough, might have been able to catch them off guard. Mm, but now with the bomb planted, they could look to cover many of the different angles here, as he is just running in with the Colt. He's just trying to take him out. 
<laughs> and uh, it is not going to work out for him. Nice try. 10-2 at the end of it all. Imperial will pick up the win.